it's interesting because this came about at the same time as some of the pressure stuff to help with more, so. Yeah. Um, what is she doing? She's in Greece traveling, but she's also got the like, public shows. Oh, cool. Yeah, like one in that place, one is off. Uh, what? And the other one, there are two at, um, one in Costco, the other one pretty much at, at, at uh, where's it? Live from Los Angeles, welcome. Good morning, Laura. What are we doing? What's going on? Oh, that's oh, that's so hard. I'm like, I have no idea. Every time it goes to him. I'm like, I'm, I'm making weird faces on my coffee <laughs> mat. Seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Live from Los Angeles, welcome to Good Morning La La Land. I'm Dr. Aaron. Hi, I'm Rob Mack. And I'm Jessa Moyer. This is Good Morning La La Land, America's first live streaming daily talk show, coming to you live Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. Also available on Apple TV and Roku via the EverTalk app. And it is hashtag Thought Thursday. We're going to talk about the most important thing you need to do today, which is get your mind right. We come together each day to know the truth, live on spiritual principle, and align with universal law, and have lots of gas and lots of coffee. Yes. What cup is, is that? <laughs> Actually, it's my second cup. Oh, you're doing yeah. good. Yeah. I mean, you're halfway through the day already, so. <laughs> I need cups 20 is more. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're so excited to welcome our very special guest on this Hashtag Thought Thursday. Good morning, everyone, back in the studio. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We've got the master injector herself in the house, Bernice Cohen. How are you today? Hi, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on the show. This is super exciting for me. Yes. We <laughs> have a very exciting conversation ahead on some alternatives that people are using aesthetic injectables for. But first, we want to know, how do you start your day? What's your morning routine? Do you want to know the short answer or the long answer? The real answer. So the, well, the short answer is coffee. And then the long answer is coffee. <laughs> it goes on and on until I finally get out of bed. I have three kids, four dogs, a full-time job. I'm flying all over the country all the time. So coffee is the only way for me to go. How many dogs? Wow. Four, four dogs. dogs. Wow. That's like yeah, 12 dogs. jobs all together. Yeah. Easy part. Dogs are the easy part. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you so much yeah. for being with us. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Thanks for being up so early with us today. You're you've got a, you've got a lot to celebrate. Can you tell us a little bit about your latest project? So my latest project was um, Next Level, a movie called Next Level, and it's coming out September 6th. And this is like Mean Girls meets Fame meets High School Musical. Wow. This is really next level, by the yeah. way. I cannot wait to see it. So what's your morning routine? How do you start your day, Ella? Well, I normally wake up and then I get dressed and then um, some mostly I get up and I go to my ice skating in the mornings. Mm. Nice. That's so good. Already busy at work here in Hollywood. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. We've got Nicole thank Dubois you. in the house. She is an actress and comedian, a very funny girl. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on your latest film as well. We want to know all about debunkers later in the show. First, tell us, how do you start your day? What's your morning routine? Um, I start my morning by complaining that it's morning. Um, and then I have my coffee. I become a real person. If I don't have to act that day, I just put yoga pants on and do nothing to the rest of myself. And um, if I have to act, then I become a beautiful girl who's presentable. I love it. A complainer who admits it. <laughs> yeah. That's dope. <laughs> I call Good for you. beautiful. <laughs> uh, well, thank you so much for being with us. Sherry Jason Thanks. is in the house. We are honoring City of Hearts and the arts education system. Good morning, Sherry. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we want to know all about your special event later in the show. We know Frost. But Fresh Faces is coming up. But first, tell us, how do you start your day? What's your morning routine? I enjoy doing a hike in the mountains. That gets me going. I get to see the ocean and look at the beautiful mountains and all the natural uh, plants that are growing and smell that wonderful air. And that gets the day going really nicely. That's nice wow. meditative and um, prepares me for the stresses that I'm going to face at City Hearts. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for being with us and hot off Disney's Sydney to the max. Ava Kolker is in the house. Good morning, Ava. Good morning. Uh, we're so excited that you're with us today. We want to know all about your latest projects, your new single. But first, we want to know, how do you start your day? 
Well, usually since we have to be on set super early and leave the house at like 6 a.m., I usually take a hot shower in the morning and then I try to get to set early every morning so that I can do a bike ride around the lot, especially when nobody's there. It's super nice because I can. it kind of gets my uh, heart pumping for the day. And then I grab a healthy breakfast and head to school. Wow, that's awesome. She does laps around a lot? <laughs> yeah, bike ride around wow. a lot. I gotta level up, man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hashtag goals. Well, thank you so much for being with us. Ari Lowell is in the house. He is the at good producer on Instagram and also the founder of Nightlight Pictures. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Thank you so much for being with us. So how does a creative producer, filmmaker like you start his day? What's your morning routine? Well, first of all, it starts with mandatory black tea with way too much sugar. And I'm a big sunrise person. So when no one's in the house uh, and everyone's still asleep, I love to be able to just take out all the things that inspire me, all the projects, crazy ideas, and unique projects that I haven't really gotten to. And I want those things to inspire me. And I do one thing that I think is really important, which is I give myself a chance to dream without judgment and see what actually inspires me. And that, I do that until the squirrels who live in the tree outside of our house come and knock on the window and I have to feed them. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I know I'm done with my creative. I was not experience. expecting the squirrels. That sounds <laughs> super cool. So what are you most inspired by or about today? Oh, today, I, I think there's some new projects we have that, ha that get me out of bed every single day. I just, I'm a pure optimist from Chicago. And so everything I see in front of me, I get really excited about. We just did a film. We just finished some stuff with Funny or Die. And so I just have so many things that get me out of bed every morning that keep me positive and looking forward to things. And today, I think really uh, with upcoming election, I think there's a lot of momentum. I think we all need to be very involved. So I think a lot of our projects are now having uh, not only comedy bents to give us a break and a relief from the chaos, but then also things that are a little more political involved so we can kind of keep our country on track. Oh, nice. Love that. And I love that he's a pure optimist. I don't often associate Chicago with Me, optimism. Me, I, I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> it's more of a real life exactly. type of a mentality. Totally. Love that. <laughs> The Midwestern mistake. We're super charming. Mm -hmm. I feel you, Harry. Well, thank you all so much for being with us. We look forward to continuing the conversation later in the show. I was thinking the same thing about yeah. this first thing I thought. Chicago, not so much of an, it's more of a realist type of You always think right? of it as the windy city, right? Yeah. So that was all about politics. And I yeah, beg right? to disagree. As a Midwesterner, I think that people assume that they're realists and pessimists. It's the grit and grind that allows you to survive mm. a polar vortex, live through those brutal winters, and still be able to come out on force and celebrate life and really shine. Well, Oprah That's came from there, right? She did. So there she you did go. Indeed. Yeah, so and, and, uh, Michael Jordan didn't come from there, but certainly he's a case study in resilience uh -huh. and faith and optimism, so yeah. I always like everybody from Chicago, though. I They're do, all, too. like, good exactly. people. I've never, it's one of the friendliest <laughs> cities I've been to, honestly. Yeah, right? Great food, great music, great people. <laughs> totally. Yeah. So what's going on, you guys? I woke up at, like, 4 in the morning with, you guys ever get, like, those leg-like cramps where you, like, it hurts so bad? No. Yes, no. all the time. Oh my gosh. I was like, I guess I need some potassium. I'm like yeah. in four o'clock in the morning taking some potassium. Like, I guess, <laughs> isn't that what it is? Yeah, actually, <laughs> potassium does help. And I don't know if anybody watched like the NBA finals years ago, but LeBron James got really bad cramps in his legs. So you got to hydrate, you got to get the potassium in. I was like, wow. But yeah. Who knew? It's interesting. I wonder what that's about. I know. It's like I barely work yeah. out. It's like I'm using a bunch of potassium yeah. or something. Maybe the flying dehydrated. It, <laughs> no, exactly. For me, it always comes right after I travel. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it's, it's pretty dehydrating to fly. In. Okay. Yeah, well, now we know. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Apparently, it's very painful, though. I said, like, wow, mm. this is not fun. Yeah, I've had them before. <laughs> I, when I was young and was growing up and playing basketball, I had a friend. I would always force this friend to play basketball with me because he was a good basketball mm -hmm. player and I wanted to get better. And occasionally he'd get these leg cramps and they were so bad that he could, it made him stop playing. And I would always get so upset because I'd be like, dude, you're just trying to find an excuse not oh, to play. No. Oh. And then later when I had them, I discovered it's real. It's like torture. Yeah. You're like, this yeah. is, what is going on right now? Totally. <laughs> yes. stop this. Totally. Totally. It's exactly. I was going to I. Oh, my night was very nice. Thank you. Just a simple night because tonight I'm going out to a networking event. Big surprise. Uh, the group, the XX Agency, it's a women's networking event. We're going to be meeting over in Beverly Hills at St. John's. So I'm really excited about that. Of course, a powerful speaker and really just having a chance to connect and commute have community with very like-minded businesswomen. Super dope. Love yeah. that. I like that. Staying I busy. I like that, like that. So today is Thought Thursday and talking about the most important thing you can do today. And I think it's getting your mind right. I was thinking about, you know, I get asked a lot, what does it mean to be a spiritual leader? What does it mean to be a spiritual practitioner? And it's really about getting your mind right, which I yeah. think is the most important thing. It's more important than anything agreed, we do agreed, all agreed. day long. You know I agree, but I'm in psychology right? world, so yeah. So I fight with my mind all day long. <laughs> <laughs> stay right, stay right.
right, Sarah. Get your fun nose, yes. Right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so that's what being a spiritual practitioner in a, you know, is a three-year program. Um, and a lot of it was going through, of course, all the different stuff within the psyche and consciousness. But a lot of it was also just getting your mind right, living on spiritual principle. And that means not, you know, focusing on what you do want instead of what you don't want having non-judgment, non-attachment, and basically not letting anything of the world be your identity or affect you, basically, yeah. living on faith. I love that. So how would you describe or define like non-judgment and non-attachment? Because I think people hear about those things a lot, but they don't know exactly what they mean. Yeah, well, I mean, non-judgment is staying neutral, but it doesn't mean that you don't like decide to be and put yourself in an environment that you want to be in. Yeah. It's just that you are you don't like become the effect of it. Because if you, if you think about it, if you really love yourself, the minute you judge something, you put a negative or positive meaning on something, you instantly become the effect of your own judgment. Yeah. So why would you have a negative judgment that's gonna make you feel bad? Totally instead agree. of it's like, this doesn't work, great, I'm gonna just focus on what I do want instead yeah. of what I don't want. I love that, I totally agree with you. I think particularly with non-judgment, it's about sticking to the facts yep. and not like overlaying that with a story totally. about what the facts mean. So like, for instance, I'm almost 21, right? So I would just stick <laughs> to that fact and not say, yeah. oh, I'm getting so old now, right? <laughs> it, oh, is, it is what it is, as they say, right? Yeah, it's true. That's it's what non-judgment yeah. is. And non-attachment is basically not having your self-worth or good or bad or whatever attached to whatever outcome. We don't outline. There's so many spiritual practitioners and um, practices and principles, but primarily it's like, Focus on what you do want instead of what you don't want. Focus on the positive. I have a hard time with the non-attachment, though, because you're also supposed to focus on what you want and be excited and feel it. So how do you not get attached to that? I mean, when you're so passionate and you're so dedicated, you're working so hard to something, it's natural to be attached to it. Yeah, yeah I think that's true. Natural. For me, it's um, mm -hmm. about prioritizing peace and happiness. And I want to manifest a feeling. I don't want to manifest a form or a thing. So my discovery in my life mm. has been to forget about manifesting anything in particular focus on manifesting a feeling, and then everything else manifests as a result of that, right. right? And so for me, it's all about the feeling, and I don't really try to get too specific about what I want to manifest, because when I do, it is easy to get attached and desperate and needy around it, and then you feel frustrated, and then your one point of power, which is how you feel, is compromised. You know, so now the conditions and circumstances dictate how you feel instead of you dictating how you feel. Yeah. That happens to me all of the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm being yeah. completely human. honest. I, mean, yeah. I think a lot of people can relate to this. Like, you are, I, nobody wants to be a victim, but the way you feel becomes a product of your circumstance and the yeah. situation that you're in. And it, it, it's so hard to be able to break free yeah. from that. Yeah. yeah, it can feel hard. I, I, I like the idea that it's just unpracticed and unfamiliar. And you know, none of us are taught these things, yeah, right? It's like, I a, mean, it's like a muscle. It's totally counterintuitive of what we've been taught. Yeah, I mean, since you're young, you're basically conditioned and programmed mm -hmm. to be attached and to, t to attach your peace and happiness and your experience or feeling of success and abundance to what's happening in the world instead of what's happening inside of you. And so because of mm -hmm. that, we overlook the happiness that always exists inside, right? Right. Yeah. It's a practice, it's mastery. It's, it's like muscles, like going to the gym yes. and becoming an Olympian athlete. It's, true. it's no joke, it's you know? It's no joke. But I, I feel like it is the most important thing to do in our lives. And if we do that, we can have, we can still have a human experience, but not be the effect of the suffering. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's such a good point. So I'll just give you one example. Like, you know, I have clients and we all have clients, and part of the challenge and opportunity with clients is that they'll always say, but I can't meditate, but I can't choose my thoughts. And so I just don't meditate or I just don't work at it. And I think that's like going to the gym and saying, I'm weak, so I'm not going to go to the gym. The point of going to the gym is to not be weak anymore. Like, what, what sense does this make? So, don't you feel like your clients challenge you to stay oh, on totally. principle? You're like, why are they doing that? <laughs> yeah. My clients, and I'm like, they're not living on principle. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's my practice to stay back and yeah. it's perfect, whatever they're going through. And it's like, true. It's a mirror. It reminds you of your own attachments. Completely. Yeah, it's so true. I do think you're great about this, Jess, because mm -hmm. I see you pivot frequently and consistently and uh, really well, you know, Thank over you. and over again. Do you feel that way or not? It's something I'm working on. Like yeah. Aaron said, it's a practice. It's like yeah, working totally. out. You're not naturally born with no judgment, no attachment, and just this <laughs> ethereal, <laughs> peaceful being. Yeah. No. Life gives you a lot of circumstances that you have to work through, overcome, self-doubt. I mean, it sounds amazing to live this incredible life, but it's so hard. It's a lot of work to be able to do that. It, 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 I think it does take energy, but I would also say that you're doing it so much of the day already, or you'd be in a, or we'd all be in a fetal position in the corner crying ourselves to death. Completely. Every time you go to sleep, you're doing it. Absolutely, but this isn't something, and I, I'm doing it so much better than I ever was, but if you're watching and you think, well, yeah, that's great. They're on a TV show. She's a doctor of divinity. He's a master of happiness. She's a, a model or whatever. 
we still have to practice that. It's incredible to be able to preach mm -hmm. it, but it's still difficult. It's still something we can relate to. It gets way easier, and it becomes automatic at some point. Yeah. It does. You know, in the same way that just the practiced undesirable or unhappy mm -hmm. thought becomes automatic. Like, 66 days, I mean, empirically, 66 days your brain will rewire itself so that the automatic thought becomes the positive, happy, healthy one and not the one yeah. that's uncomfortable. And then it takes 10,000 hours after that <laughs> to master it and actually become successful at it. It takes 10,000 hours of doing anything to be a master. I love that. But any, I mean, I think that it's it, it's hard, but it's harder to not do it, mm. in my opinion, right? So it's like... That's what these suicide I, yeah. test books are about. Are you kidding? <laughs> it's, like, it's a way it's harder done. Right? It's done. It's done. It's done. But on that note, we have so many amazing guests. Let's find out how they get their mind right. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Where can you watch the stories of people changing the world? EverTalk TV, the Netflix of talk. I'm Jez Moyer, the co-founder and host of EverTalk TV, and I am thrilled to introduce you to America's first live video streaming talk show network. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here on the couch with all you amazing people. <laughs> yeah. I'm just in complete awe. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. And for those who don't know what goes on, there is, this is a big old, there's a lot going on here. <laughs> a lot we going do this on every here. day. Why? God Why bless you guys. Right? I mean, people, there's a lot going on. Thank you for having me. This is an awesome studio. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. <laughs> Oh, I feel that. I yes. feel that. Cool. How exciting. Motivation Monday. You know? And the guests this morning have been incredible. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here with you. And we have Rachel Boston, who is in The Last Bridesmaid on Hallmark. It actually is dropping tomorrow, the 22nd, right? It is. Tomorrow night's our premiere. Woo! Wow. Congratulations! I am so excited to welcome Jason and Ashley Waller to the show. Congratulations on the new beginnings. We're so excited for the premiere on MTV tonight. Thank you, guys. You guys. We appreciate it. Thank so. you. The book is actually being shipped out today. It published this what? week. Wow, congratulations! You guys are are the Super first cool. show oh, that awesome. I've actually done on uh, talking you. about the book. I think this is my first time my book's been up on TV. This is awesome. <laughs> Our friends at Universal Pictures have a special delivery for us this morning from a tethered himself. Ooh. Have you seen the film Us by oh, Academy Award winner gosh. Jordan Peele? You know, I'm sitting here next to you guys and it's just like, this is a powerful moment for me. Like, you know, I'm, I'm humbled by it because it's like, I'm sharing this movie with you guys, and uh, you know, it's uh, it's moving for me. What are you most grateful for today? I am so grateful to be here and to have the opportunity to be with all these wonderful, badass boss babes <laughs> um, and with all of you. And it's just a wonderful opportunity to share the positive messages out in the world because I think the world really needs it Amazing. right now. What we've done and thanking me for the contribution we're making to their lives. Oh, and I thought, nice. That's this great. is what my purpose is. This is why I was born. Now show the camera. up to you to choose the winner. Is it Annie? Is it Haley? That's why I like the show. You know, years ago I did the Dinah show, which is Dinah Shore, and it was a daytime show. And it was kind of like this. It was just like very up and it was all positive stuff. They didn't bring uh, negative stuff to, to the audience. And that's why I feel with this show. It's very relaxed. You know, it's very professional, but it's, it's quite a bit of fun. You can binge watch and binge watch. You can binge watch. And you can binge watch. Binge watch or you can binge watch. Please binge watch. You can binge watch and binge them on EverTalk TV. Thanks for coming. Bye. Mm. First time the experience. I'm so happy to do this with you. Anytime, anywhere on EverTalk TV, your home for talk.
Live from Los Angeles, welcome back to Good Morning, Lala. And on Thought Thursday, we are talking guests that have really made an impact in our lives through their thinking. So Harry Lowell is in the house. He is the founder of Nightlight Pictures. You've seen him. He's done some spots for Super Bowl, even all kinds of things. You've hit us hard with some major programming <laughs> in our lives. Why have you done this to us? No, just kidding. <laughs> oh, that's very funny. Well, I appreciate that I've hit you somehow. That's great. That's the goal. Coming from Chicago, you know, you don't know what that's going to be, but I knew early on I wanted to be a part of something that was going to tell stories and move people, right? Mm -hmm. Either laughter or inspire or terrify, well, whatever the motion needs to be. And I think that's what's great about coming out here to Los Angeles and having a chance to work on Super Bowl and documentaries mm -hmm. and feature films and series. I think you get a chance to communicate with different audiences. I think nowadays, like your show, couldn't exist a few years ago. Right. And now the audiences are so scattered, but they're so specific that they can find that programming they like. And it's really exciting right now for mm -hmm. me because we're finding new ways to communicate with people from different kinds of stories. Totally. But people have used comedy, like mm -hmm. you mentioned, Funny or Die, for thousands of years. What is it about Funny or Die in the comedic spots that you love producing so much? Yeah, comedy always draws me. I think that was a great, for me growing up, Chicago is great and dark sometimes and so it was a chance to escape that world and so I always loved it and they also had a lot of improv so Second City I grew up with that and mm. taking those kind of classes so what I love about Saturday Night Live, Funny or Die is they come from that same ilk which is let's start with an idea let's not make it fully formed let's see what the improv let's see what all the collaboration creates so you start with something that's kind of a fuzzy blob but you know it's going to get better and better as everyone adds their input and so I think that's why it resonates so strongly is the work mm -hmm. you do is constantly changing and evolving to be very contemporary, very in the moment. Right. Um, that's really, that's my favorite kind of I comedy. Love that. On, you know, Thought Thursday, we talk a lot about the power of thoughts and the power of, you know, was your upbringing, were your parents innovative? Were they entrepreneur? How did you get like this? How much swearing can you do? <laughs> uh, my dad is hilarious and he is oh, really? not funny outwardly. He just makes you laugh all the time oh. because his nature, like my, his mom, they were just so positive. They just really embraced life. So they find the humor and everything, no matter how dark or dire the situation, they are just so positive and full of life. And so that just always inspired me and challenged me and kind of pushed me to, you know, look at saying, how could we bring that to other people who maybe don't have that same mm -hmm. upbringing, that same opportunity. And so I find myself surrounded with people that have the same kind of vision on life. Even right. when we're struggling, I have a partner now from Mexico City, and no matter how hard things get, we find time to laugh and joke, and it makes things so much smoother and easier. because. Especially in production, nothing is a straight line. Right. Mm -hmm. Everything is you have to get off road sometimes and take the exit ramp, and but you're going to get there eventually. I feel like we're the production GPS people because we know where we're trying to get to, and it's never going to be that line. So I think comedy and humor, and it helps attract your who you're working with. I think it uh, uh, touches the audience in a way. So I think that's just a great universal way to communicate. And finding and capturing the art in that hot mess. I love right? hot mess. <laughs> Me too. It's so beautiful. I also love Mexico City. I spent some time living there when I was modeling. It's incredibly beautiful. And you're the same person, I think. We <laughs> might have. Right? 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 Yeah. yeah. Uh, but rumor has it you're producing an international travel series out of Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. We just came back and uh, did the pilot piece there, which is mm. great. And I, I'm finding weird connections when you think about it. So when you're on the plane, you have a lot of time to yourself. You start going, oh, I didn't realize that subconsciously these things are happening. So we did an immigration film, and then we have this travel food sh series. And I'm realizing that what I'm really liking about it is that it seems to make the world smaller. It brings us together and mm -hmm. finding we're seeing the similarities in cultures and people as opposed to all of our differences and the things that separate us. So I'm finding little themes that we didn't plan for, but I'm seeing how we're, why I'm attracted to certain projects later. I go, oh, that's why that oh, rose yeah. to the top. That's why I wanted to make that series. Also, I like to travel. Works. What I want some you air to, miles. What brought you to the immigration <laughs> documentary? But. You know what, the creators of that brought it to me and they said, Harry, we've got an idea. And this was Dino, Harvey, uh, um, Matt, and Arthur. They said, we, we think that there's kind of an ugly political discourse right now about immigration, especially about Hispanic yeah. immigration, mm -hmm. a lot of misinformation. And so rather than add fuel to the fire or you know pick a side, why don't we just tell some stories, right. some really simple, quiet stories. And I was like, wow, this is a brilliant idea. So we found all the right filmmakers. We found, we cast and found the right people to really kind of have a disparate view of, you know, just what makes up people who are American, who are becoming Americans in a Hispanic kind of way. And, you know, my partner is Hispanic. So uh, from a business perspective at Nightlight, and so it was great for us to use our skill sets together and for me to learn even more about the culture and how different an Argentinian is from a Mexican, from a, a, someone from Spain. Mm -hmm. So I think that was just... Uh, for me, really great to put out there, and it's, it's really caught on. Comcast distributed it, 
and the studio executive. Mm -hmm. We said, this is a really quiet film. There's no smoking mm -hmm. gun. There's no pointing fingers. So it's not like you're going to have a big trailer to promote this film. And he said, no, let's do it. We believe in this. And that was Jose Silva oh. championed this and said, no, we have to make this. Let's go make this little film. And we thought it would do its little job, and it's grown. It's, it's exploded on the So any particular circuit. like story within one of the immigrants that's really stuck with you? There's several, but I think two of them uh, that come to mind right away is one of them was how uh, one of them had come over when he was younger, and he'd realized how often the people that he grew up with out here took for granted the freedoms and the opportunities we have in America. Right. And he saw his dad, what he had to leave and leave behind to make a better life for he and his family. So he is, I love that idea that he's always been an American in his mind, he's grown up here, but he really appreciates it because his dad would tell him what we fled from, what we left for, and how many opportunities are here. So I think a lot of times we don't take for, we take for granted what we, our, our gifts that we have here. Mm -hmm. And I think so when we realize true. what it is, we should be able to explore and become people who follow their dreams and you know, this is a country that doesn't limit you. And mm -hmm. I think that's one of the best gifts of all, not just, persecution and religious freedom, but just the fact that you can say, I'm going to be from Chicago or Michigan, and I'm going to do an international stage of things, and no one can tell you no here, and they're going to support you. You can do anything yeah. you want here. You it's can amazing. So those are the totally. stories that really kind of, you know, a lot of tears in the eyes. And then there was a, a woman who said she came over here, and uh, she has two kids, and she did the same thing, left to make a better life for a family. She has two doctors and a, and a guy who sends things into space. Mm. And that is what, you know, she feels this is what this country gave me and she's so proud to be an American and to support it and to mm -hmm. vote. Those are the things that I think are powerful because it relates to not just Hispanics but any immigrants Rude. that's coming here from any country. I think that's what we stand for and I love to hear what the best of America can be. Oh, it makes I me love proud. Love of that. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so you know as a creative person you know being successful in the entertainment business can be a struggle for lots of people. Mm. What's been the greatest challenge for you and how did you overcome it? Uh, you know a lot of it's in my own head. I mm. think that's the problem mm. is uh, you know I think there are two t there's two different kind of Hollywoods, right, that I see, and I feel that there's a Hollywood that wants to come out and make the films and the stories, and they believe in, in um, the project, right? And I'm very OCD about that. I just, this is my world right now. This is what I want to tell, and I want to figure out the best way to make that happen. And then there's a different Hollywood, a smaller one, but it's very vocal, where they want red carpets, and they want champagne, and they want, you know, limos. And so you, you can't have both. You know, you have to decide which one you want to be in. And mm. this, to me, is where I live. I love the surrounding yourself with the right people to push your career and your craft and your storytelling and that the accolades are what they are. We just want sense. limos around here, you know. <laughs> I, I, I'm not Champagne saying, popping limos, you know. I'm not saying I'm <laughs> turning down a limo ride, but, you know, I think your motivation has to be focused on that. And I think that the that was difficult in the beginning is thinking that everyone had that same strategy yeah. and that that's mm -hmm. what they were going for yeah. and learning that it wasn't. It was much more... Uh, egocentric or, or me focused as opposed to project focused. And so uh, I had some amazing mentors that supported, I love a fun set. I like comedy and pulling the best out of people and collaborating as a group. And so having the right people support that and say, yeah, no, produce like that, Harry. You do what you think it should be. And so when you get the right people, you're making magic. And then the other stuff comes, the money, the accolades. I think you have to manifest Very true. who you want to work with and then the projects become what they should be. So As awesome. opposed to judging and saying, I need this guy's real. And then when I've done that and I've chosen that guy because of his real, I want those three months of my life back. Yeah. <laughs> like, that was awful. Yeah. And, and it's unnecessary pain. Yeah, well, it's true. True. You epitomize what La La Land really is in this community of dreamers and doers. Thank mm. you, Harry. Mm -hmm. We appreciate yep. you and the work and the stories that you're sharing. Please tell everyone where they can find and follow your journey. Oh, uh, Instagram, good producer. That's pretty much the only place I do anything. And even then, it's up to Ari to bug me on planes and say, post some shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. Oh, so appreciate so it. Awesome. Love what you guys so do. Much, really. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more. Good morning, La La Land. He has done this uh, right. in other arenas. We have to change the conversation to happiness over financial success. It was like, we have to. We have to. Honestly, it was meeting new people who had already heard about what we have done and thanking me for the contribution we're making to their lives. Oh, nice. That's this great. is what my purpose is. This is why I was born. Yeah. I think this is my first time my book's been up on TV. This is awesome. <laughs> you can binge watch and binge watch. You can binge watch. And you can binge watch. Binge watch. Or you can binge watch. Please binge watch. You can binge watch and binge them on EverTalk TV. Thanks for coming. Bye.
that will inspire, uplift, and empower you anytime, anywhere on EverTalk TV, your home for talk. Live from Los Angeles, welcome back to Good Morning La Land. I'm so excited to introduce this incredible positive ray of light. She brings comedy from the LA stages now to the silver screen with Debunkers. Thanks so much for being with us, Nicole. Thanks for having mm -hmm. me. So tell us about your journey from being a comedian to an actress. Actually, you know, I started as an actress and then found comedy after that. So I think, I mean, in LA, I took a break from acting. I was doing it since I was little and went to business school. So I guess I was just doing comedy during business school. Because <laughs> I was like, I can manage that. If you do improv, that you don't is have a to joke, prepare. Right? <laughs> For sure. Um, yeah, but so I, um, I was excited to get back into acting. Debunkers was my first film after graduation. Um, and yeah. Well, let's take a look. <laughs> We've got a trailer. Hi, my name is Lexi Baker. I'm from Halifax. It's a small town in Canada where nothing really happens. This is my first time in America. And I'm really excited to be here working with you at Debunkers LLC. Limited Liability Company. Nice, Lexi. We're happy to have you. I'm Link, founder and CEO. Dr. Mario here is our co-founder and chief investigative officer. And this fine specimen is Snake. Snake is our VP of Special Clandestine Maneuvers, as well as the secretary. We hired Snake just a year ago, and he's already a senior VP. See, Lexi, there's a lot of room to move up the ladder and succeed here, because we believe in upward mobility. The American dream is alive and well, Lexi. You're looking at it. But you're just an intern and you'll be treated like garbage from this point forth. That's so cute. <laughs> so on Thought Thursday we talked a lot about the power of thought and how have you used your thinking to, you know, land you in great roles and, and have the success that you've had? Uh, I mean, yeah, it's really important in this, in what I'm doing to keep a positive attitude and keep uh, your self-confidence up because um, a lot of people um, are going to tell you what you should be and what you are and give you advice that you didn't ask for. <laughs> yes. um, and so you have to be, you have to kind of know that what you're doing is what you're meant to be doing and have confidence in your choices and uh, just go out there as you and don't apologize for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love that. <laughs> How do you stay true to you? Is there anything specific that brings you back to who you authentically are so that you can shine? I think that's, that's where I, I, I find that in my improv and in, in my sketch and because I like playing big characters that I don't necessarily look like necessary, necessarily <laughs> look like I should be playing. So going back to that gives me the freedom to be like, this is what I love to do and this is what I'm capable of, capable of doing. I can play an old woman on, on a sketch stage and probably not in a film, but you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like those stretch roles. Yeah, like yeah. I can I could play a robot, you know, uh, totally. but not in a film. I mean, <laughs> I or Harley Quinn or, or Princess yes. Di. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if you haven't checked her out on YouTube, I mean, you have mm -hmm. some incredibly funny sketches. Oh, thank you. You really do. So what's next for you? What's next for me? Um, I'm doing a lot of live shows. I had a show last night. Um, been doing some shows on the Comedy Central stage, some sketch shows. Wow. I had an improv show last night. Um, I just did a music video with Angels and Airwaves for their Rebel Girl song, which was, which has been so cool. It was my first like big music video, and that was oh, awesome. Nice. Um, yeah, and I'm I'm writing right now, so. I'm in the writing process, developing oh, a new show. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's hard, no. right? It's it's from a writer nice herself. Nice though. It's kind of <laughs> nice. Yeah. yeah, that's fun. Oh my god. Yeah. Is it tough for you, you know, being multi-passionate, multi-talented? Is it tough to choose what to work on at any particular time, or is it easy for you to manage all that? The hard part about it is there's always more to work on. You know, when you're writing and when you're acting and you're working on both and you're doing comedy, there's always something you can work on. So I think the challenge is to give yourself breaks yeah. and to not be like, okay, I'm done rehearsing, now I'm gonna go write. 
and now I'm gonna go write some stand up and write a sketch. I need to be doing everything at all to the, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We can so take a break. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Well, thank you so much for being with us today, and congratulations on your massive success. Please tell everyone where they can find and follow you. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram or on YouTube. I'm at, at Nikki Dubes on Instagram. It's youtube.com slash Nicole Dubois. And then the film is on Hulu and Showtime and Vudu and Google Play and iTunes and Amazon. Everywhere. It's everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The Thank G Bunkers. So yeah. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more on Good Morning La La Land. I'm Jessica Moyer, host of Good Morning La La Land on EverTalk TV. As a little girl with big dreams, I couldn't stop talking. I turned that into a career of premieres and red carpets and even a talk show. And recently, I had my aha moment. I was hosting a live event. A woman who represented a national cancer support community gently pulled me aside from the glitz and the glam, and she thanked me for mentioning their program on my show. Because of those few words that I had spoke on air earlier that week, one of our viewers battling cancer reached out and got the financial and emotional support she so desperately needed. I'm so grateful to have experienced that moment, a moment that truly reflects how much conversation and community matters. We need more of what matters. It is my passion and purpose to create content and lead a conversation that will ignite the light in my community and empower them to live their best lives starting today. I'm Jez Moye, and I'm a host on EverTalk TV. Live from Los Angeles, welcome back to Good Morning Lala. And on Thought Thursday, we want to celebrate the people who bring us some love in our lives. So Ella Rose Kaler, Miss Actress is in the house, and next leveling it up for us. How are you? I'm good, and how are you? <laughs> hey, you're so you. polite. So polite. We are so excited about this movie. Let me tell you, I'm a big fan of High School Musical and Fame and Mean Girls. I mean, this must have been a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah? What did you love about it? I loved getting to, like, get really close with all my friends and getting to meet a lot of new people. Yeah? Who did you meet that you really liked? Um, like Emily Skinner and Lauren Orlando. Yeah. What you love most about them? Um, they're really nice to me, and they act like they're my big sisters. Oh, I love that. I like nice people. It's important to have nice people in your life, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? Yeah, for sure. So tell us about your journey to becoming an actress. When did you know? Was it like at six months or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> did you always know you wanted to be an actress? Well, when I was littler, I wanted to be like an actress, and I wanted to like be in movies and TV shows. So um, now I am. So. How did you know? Um, because a lot of my friends, like I act. Well, like a lot of my friends want to be actors too, mm -hmm. and I wanted to like be a leader for them. Cute. Mm -hmm. So you then they could see me. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's important to be a good example, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite actor or actress out there in the world that you just think is incredible? Uh, maybe Zendaya. Zendaya is pretty cool, <laughs> huh? Have you met her yet? Mm -mm. Well, cool. look out, Zendaya, because this one is next <laughs> level. Let's take a look at the trailer. Hi everybody, how you doing? I want to welcome you to the Next Level Performing Arts Academy. Doing what I came to do. As many of you already know, this can be a very competitive environment. This is my last year at Next Level, and I'm not going to let any of the girls here think for a second that they're as good as me. Every summer, we pick one young lady, and we name her Miss Next. So the question is, which one of you is next? Some of these girls treat this academy like a slumber party. There's no pressure. Do you know what pressure does to cool? Crushes it into fine, ashy dust. It makes diamonds. Makes diamonds. She's friends with like seven year olds. Some of the girls made fun of me last night. What are you so afraid of? I'm not afraid of anything. Hundreds of people are going to discover what I already know. That you don't have it. Some of the girls here hate me. It's not hate. They're afraid you're better than them. You have three weeks to prove that you're a star. Oh, Love gosh. it. 
It looks so like so much fun. fun. What does it feel like to you to be next level and to see yourself in that movie? It feels amazing. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you know what you're going to wear to the premiere? Um, well, the premiere was actually yesterday. Oh, tell oh. me all about it. It was really fun, and everybody came. <laughs> everybody took your picture. Mm -hmm. Was Big Will there? We know Big Will. Yeah. On the show. He was there. Was he dancing? <laughs> He's always dancing, huh? So you ice skate as well, right? Yes. Where do you go? Do you go I all the go time? I go to or? El Segundo. It's in El Segundo. It's called Toyota Sports Center. Mm -hmm. And it's also where the LA Kings practice. Oh, cool. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's pretty fancy. <laughs> I want to hang out with you, I think, for on now. <laughs> so, cute. so what do you like doing when you're not doing big movies like this? Do you have fun? With friends, or um, do you spend yeah, your time? Yeah, I like having like playdates and sleepovers with my friends, and like playing with my toys. <laughs> you have a favorite toy? Um, probably just my dolls. Your dolls, yeah. Yeah. Them. yeah so, them. what's going to be next for you? Um, I'm not really that sure, but I was really excited for the movie to come out. So, oh, yeah, cute. we are too. I think everybody's going to love it. Mm -hmm. You're really a star. Thank you. So tell everyone where they can find and follow you. Are you on Instagram? Um, yeah, so I'm on Instagram at Ella Rose Kaler, and Next Level is also on Instagram at Next Level the Film. Amazing. Love Thank it. you, Thank so, you much. so much. Thank you so much. I'll right back more. Good morning, La La Land. Nice. It is hashtag National Sour Candy Day. We want to thank our special friends from Pucker Powder for treating us today. Hey, I'm what, like, what is this? What is, I don't know, it's like a, it's like a... It's, Leave it to the it's DIY. A, it's a, a, this, a sugar hookah. This looks like what I would fill up my car with, the tires. You know, <laughs> so, the air thing. For those of you watching, if you haven't met Tanya, you might she wow. is an Emmy-nominated host. Oh my God, she's so good. From <laughs> South House, Homer <laughs> family. She's a DIY expert and she's always up for a challenge. So right, why right not here. give her this oh, sour, here yep. we go, Tanya. Oh, come on. Oh, shut up. Woo! Oh my gosh, oh my wow. gosh. Wow. Live from Los Angeles, welcome back to Good Morning La Land. We are so excited to welcome this young Disney star to the show, hot off Sydney to the max. Ava Kolker is with us. Good morning. Good morning. Girl, you look fierce. Oh, yeah, thank you so much. Shirt. Yes. I thank always you. say hashtag fashion speaks. I know you're doing a new collab and a new t-shirt yeah. line. Tell us all about it. Yeah, so I'm actually going to be launching my line September 13th at Atlas Fashion Week, I believe it is. And basically what the line is, is it's... 3D t-shirts with designer jeans, or as I like to say, luxury styling for affordable prices. Nice. So it's really cool because there's like, as you can see, there's 3D printed art effects. And yeah, no, it's super excited and all the proceeds from the show will go to, will be donated to Make-A-Wish Foundation, wow. which is very, very like, I hold them very dear to my heart because I, my cousin had stage four brain cancer, mm. so he got to make a wish, and we went to Atlantis. So that's make a wish is like very important to me and very dear to our family. So I'm super duper excited, and the all the clothing will be available online after the show. And if you can't remember all the information, like I cannot, <laughs> it will be on my Instagram, Ava Colker, and I'm collabing with the or partnering with the incredible designer Paul Atu. It looks great. Oh. You can't even see maybe on very camera, cool. but yeah. also she's got these little things on the back. It's supposed I mean, it's to be really on the shoulder, but it's the very, a very long. <laughs> but it will look like that. It's very chic. Oh, very it's cool. so super much. fierce. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to get one of those and For rock sure. it with you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. For sure. I heard you're going to also rock, walk the runway. Oh, yes. I will be walking in the runway with um, my friends. So it'll be super cool because me and my sisters will be there and a bunch of my friends will be there. So there's like no better way to start truly on. right and you've done runways before yes yes exactly yeah so what inspired the idea for the shirts and the line oh my gosh well first of all the designer I'm collabing with he is genius mm. so he was like what do you think of this idea and we were just like let's do it all in what do you think of these designs we were like let's do it so then he designed all the t-shirts he 
um, he um, did them all by hand. Wow. Whoa. How do you say that they're all hand? Hand sewn? Yeah. <laughs> that. <thing> that <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's just amazing and I'm very very wow. excited. So let's talk about on Thought Thursday about thinking about your thoughts how your power of thoughts and obviously you seem like a very positive young yeah, lady right? Thank you so yeah. much. So do, have you had to work hard for that? Is your family like that? How did you get so headstrong as they say? Well I definitely have worked hard I mean but that's mainly my family because they've taught me to work hard. Mm -hmm. My parents basically have taught my sister and I to be very very efficient and productive with everything that we do so they're very hard workers, which makes us very hard workers. So the whole family basically works together. Like when, when I'm on set for one day, my mom has to take me, then my dad has to take my sister to school and to all of her auditions and activities. So we're always both go, 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 go. So, but our family, um, we're very, very close. Very, very close, very, very positive. Um, yeah, our family's super close and positive energy always. So your sister is also a very successful actress. She is there is. ever any competition, or are you really supportive of each other? Well, there is competition, not actually like between us, like competition, competition, yeah. but we have gone for a lot of the same roles in the past, mm -hmm. which is crazy because we're almost three years apart. And so there has been lots of competition for roles, but like never really against each other. We're never mm -hmm. like, I really want this one. We're always supportive of each other. And I'm very, very proud of how far she's come. Actually, now that I'm promoting myself, I can promote her too. Her movie, <laughs> Freaks, that she's starring in is coming out September 13th. Oh, wow, Ooh, that's exciting. So nice. Friday the 13th, same Ooh. as my fashion line, which is kind of crazy. Anyway, yeah, I'm like super excited for her too. <laughs> so, that's incredible. Yeah. So what advice would you have to young girls who want to pursue a career in fashion in the arts? Um, first of all, always like trust your instincts and stick with your gut. And if you have an idea, remember it or like write it down or tell somebody about That's it. That's an important one. Yeah. You'll lose it. And exactly. Then, yeah. For me, what, what happens with me is I'm very talkative. <laughs> Maybe if you guys can tell. But um, yeah, my sister and I are super close. So I'm trying to get into writing because I kind of force myself to write things down. I'm like, I need, I need to write because I'm also doing singing as well. So singing and fashion, they're both kind of very important to write down ideas and to be creative. So I write, but I mostly, I mostly tell my sister all of my thoughts and ideas. <laughs> She's like your file keeper. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Human so, file keeper. Yep. My human file keeper. Wow. Yeah. So tell us about the show a little bit more. Yeah, so we are now filming season two of City of Max, which is on Disney Channel. And it has been so much fun. And we, the new season is going to be hysterical. We're actually filming season, uh, episode six, I believe, right now. Mm -hmm. So it's super cool. And it's also cool to go from acting one day and then that same day going into the studio to record. And then the next morning, fashion. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like this, this, this. So it's like creative, 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 which keeps us on our feet. Wow. Do you get to rest? Yes. Or are you like, okay, that's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. But we gotta fit in TV sometimes. Yeah. Like, <laughs> my sister and I and my mom and my dad, we all gotta watch our shows. Yeah, yeah keep up on This Is Us. And the Your Bachelor. friends must feel maybe a little insecure. They're like, how do we keep up with this family and these yeah. girls and everything? <laughs> well, actually, I, I graduated elementary school two years ago, and that was when I ended doing public school. So I started homeschooling in sixth grade. And I didn't have that many friends with elementary school because, like you said, it was kind of when I would go off to film and then I'd come back and then people would kind of like get closer together and then I would just, they would, nobody would be mean to me, they just we wouldn't have that click. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my best friends are actors, yeah. which is really nice though because we have similar schedules. Sometimes it's hard to plan things because we have different hiatuses which is like a week off break, you guys probably know yeah. that. But, um, so it's sometimes hard to plan things, but yeah, we keep up with each other. Yeah. Well, we're so That's excited awesome. to continue to watch both you and your sister shine. Please tell everyone where they can find and follow you. Yeah, so on Instagram, I'm Ava Kolker, same for YouTube and TikTok, and those are, and Pola too, which is the designer I'm collaborating with, which I'm you guys right. already know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned, we'll be right back with Martin. Good Morning La Land. Where can you watch the stories of people changing the world? Ever Talk TV, the Netflix of talk. I'm Jessa Moyer, the co-founder and host of Ever Talk TV, and I am thrilled to introduce you to America's first live video streaming talk show network. You can binge watch and binge watch. You can binge watch. And you can binge watch. You can binge watch or you can binge watch. Please binge watch. You can binge watch and binge them on Ever Talk TV. Thanks for coming. Bye.
empower you anytime, anywhere on EverTalk TV, your home for talk. Live from Los Angeles, welcome back to Good Morning La La Land. We are so excited to be here with Sherry Jason, and we are saying yes to the arts today with City Hearts. Thank you so much for being with us oh, today. Oh, I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the program. Uh, I think I have to start with the founding of it, which was a very long time ago. Uh, my husband and I met in being public defenders representing kids who had gotten into trouble. Mm -hmm. And I had an experience as a brand new public defender. I was at Central Juvenile Hall looking around for the very first time and I heard a piano playing. I heard music, piano music and there were boys lifting weights and playing basketball but I heard this music and I followed the sound to a little storeroom and this was so bizarre to hear music, piano music at Juvenile Hall and there was a boy in there playing just a simple Mozart melody but it turns out it was his first piano lesson and he was playing by ear. Oh wow. And I stood back and tears were streaming down my cheeks because the, there was a young woman, she said, can you believe it? He's a prodigy. This was his first lesson. But he was also 13 years old and he had committed a murder. And he was going to be the kind of client that I was going to have. And I walked out of there just, just, just saying, damn, damn, what if he had met that piano first? Mm -hmm. And as I continued to represent and meet my new clients, who were just children, but they had done some bad things. I mean, you know, from a range of things, from stealing gum from a liquor store to some the, the most serious crimes possible. Um, and, and what was going on and why this was happening, and I also got to meet their victims who were wonderful people and didn't deserve in any way, shape, or form to have this happen, and they were gonna carry forever this, this tragedy. Mm. Um, and so it seemed to me that the whole system was a little backwards, that, um, that prevention was getting this tiny, tiny, tiny like this, you know, and that law enforcement, incarceration, that whole thing was getting all the funding. And, and it just seemed like, what, what do we want to do? We want to make it so this didn't happen at all. And so that means prevention, intervention. How do you do that? What can we do? And my background is that I'm a ballet teacher. I have been for a very long time. And, and I know what it has done for me in my life and the focus I've been able to have. And the students that I teach, I have a ballet school um, in Topanga Canyon where we live, Ballet for Topanga. And um, uh, seeing students who are dyslexic and you know, failing in school, and as they get stronger and get more kinetic memory and, and feel more confident mm -hmm. in what they're doing kinetically, um, then their school grades all improve. They were right. doing better in math. And they were getting better English grades. So, so I watched that and I thought, okay, here we have, we have a possibility. And so City Hearts, Kids Say Yes to the Arts, provides the platter. I call it this delicious platter of the arts, like yummies, you know. And so you can try Shakespeare and you can try photography and you can try dance and you can try musical theater. And something will inspire these children to, to take, you know, uh, to know the path that they have to take, which is not to be with their their friends who are doing bad things. Um, wow. And I tell our teachers, you know, you may never see this child again. You have one and a half hours to, to make an impact. Mm -hmm. And you have to provide this child with something inside so that when that kid comes to that crossroads, do I do that or do I do that? He's gonna know, right. he's gonna know and have respect for human life and, right. and being a part of society. One of the sayings in, um, is the idle mind is the work of the devil. And I don't believe in the devil, but I do believe that our minds can, you know, they need to be busy and yes. focused or yes. else they can go, especially, and I don't know the, the percentage of kids that get in trouble in our culture, but I would imagine it's a lot. Coming from California, I witnessed my friends, you know, getting in trouble, going to jail, doing all kinds of things, the chaos around here. So what do you think it is that that someone out there can do, they're watching this, whether it be someone who is having too much time on their hands or whether they have a child that they see going down kind of a bad path, what would they do? They'd come and they would sign up for a course? They would do what? We specifically, City Hearts specifically works in the lower economic areas. I mean, these are children who wouldn't have an opportunity for arts education without our intervention. Mm -hmm. So we are in the poorest schools and the purest communities. Um, around Southern California, we're, so that's where we go. We're in after school programs or during school programs. Mm -hmm. We're in a, um, a facility for transitional families in, uh, that are homeless. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so those are the kind of 
places. So if someone's watching, they would try and call you up and say, would you come to here? Or would they come to you in if, those programs? If their child is in do? a school that we could work at, then we would then, that we'd love to know about new school sites that would be interested in our programs. I would say that if someone is not in our, in our uh, demographic or a geographic area, that important things for parents are who does your kid hang out with? Please pay attention to their friends. Please know what they're doing. Pay attention to their social media. Pay attention to what's, what, they're, what they're talking about with people. And, and if they seem like they're depressed or lacking focus, just try to find something. You know, volunteering, doing good for other people is just a great way to start. Um, you know, working in, in a shelter with animals or helping people get fed or any number of things to have um, young people understand about compassion and learning to be a part of our society in, so, a, in a positive way. Sherry, I know that they can also get involved with the seventh annual event. Yes, yes, August. yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh, we're so excited. It's our major fundraiser of the year. It's happening this Sunday at Leica, um, Leica Gallery, which is right down the street from your studios here. And um, from one to four, we are honoring internationally renowned and Pulitzer Prize winning photographer Nick Utt, who um, his iconic image that he won the Pulitzer for was the little girl running from the napalm in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. That's his. That's his iconic image. It just, it wow. you know, it really chilled America at the time and, and helped us all understand what was going on. Mm -hmm. um, the image that he's given us, however, for the event uh, that we will be auctioning off is his portrait of the Japanese snow monkey bathing. And when you look at that, right just you just feel like. Yes, I yes. need that tub. <laughs> uh, I mean, you just see that face, yes. and he's going, yeah. Yes. <sighs> totally um, savoring it. And Nick will be there, and we're actually right. um, honoring him. And then we have Jeff Garland, mm -hmm. Garland as our um, guest MC, and he's delightful. He's just such a character, um, and our host. And um, uh, we have a, a whole range, about 50 photographs from world-renowned photographers have donated their images to us, then all this will be on auction. Nice. Well, yeah. you seem like a walking angel, so oh, tell yeah. people where they can find and follow you and get involved with the organization. So the um, Instagram is, and I'm not very good at all these things, is um, City Hearts Official, at City Hearts Official, and then our website for the event, at cityhearts.org slash Fresh Focus. Let me say that again. <laughs> <laughs> City Hearts dot org slash fresh focus right oh, thank, thank you, you so much thank you, thank you. we'll thank be right you. back with more on good morning mm -hmm. Land. Live from Los Angeles, welcome back to Good Morning La La Land. The master injector is with us, mm. Bernice Cohen. Thank you so much for being with us today. <laughs> My pleasure. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks mm -hmm. for having me on. This is really exciting for me. So, so, so we want to get the lowdown on injecting. What do you? What, what? Tell us all about what you're doing. Oh my gosh. Okay. So. I'm a registered nurse and I specialize in cosmetic injectables and lasers. And I also travel all over the United States and I train other plastic surgeons and dermatologists how to inject uh, fillers and toxins and <laughs> toxins. that sort of thing. We want to get <laughs> <laughs> like you train more RNs, yeah. PAs, MDs than anyone else in the country. Yeah. At this wow. point, I have, yeah. So I've been traveling around the country for about the last 12 years or so. And uh, I started off as a national trainer for Galderma. And they make, uh, and Valiant, and those big pharmaceutical companies, and they make um, fillers like uh, Restylane, Sculptra, 
uh, disport. Okay, you can like you can fill. Yeah. I've heard of girls <laughs> filling their tushes, yeah. like uh -huh. actually like enlarging. In I'm and I thought, well, I've been trying to get my butt a little smaller my whole life, and now they're trying to get bigger. So I'm really yeah. confused. You can yeah. fill your face. You can you can <clears throat> do, have it. Your sweat glands. Sweat glands, like which is a major problem. I'm always sweating. Yeah, so. it's it's a that's a big deal. That's yeah. a big deal because there are millions of people that actually suffer from it's called primary axillary hyperhidrosis, Oof. and uh, that's a big word that means just that your sweat glands don't turn off; they just keep going no matter what. So you can put on antiperspirant and deodorant, and you can do all tea tree oil and all the things vinegar. It doesn't matter. You just keep sweating again and again. So. Um, what we can do for that is we can use a toxin, a botulinum A type toxin like Botox or Dysport or ZMN. There's a bunch of them out there now. And we inject the axilla, your underarms, and it lasts for about four to 12 months. So you wow. stop sweating. So what it does is it just kind of shuts off the um, receptors and so your muscles don't get the um, uh, the surge to release the mm. either the water or the lipids. So we have two different kinds of sweat glands. We have two to four million, by the way, in the entire body. The majority of them are going to be on the feet, on the hands, um, in the armpits. Those are the eccrine glands. And then we also have apocrine glands, and the apocrine glands are the ones that are responsible for um, the odor. Mm. So the eccrine glands, they produce the water, and the apocrine glands, they produce the odor-causing no. sweat. I was born without those. Yeah. <laughs> I think we all were. We were all born without those. In all so, I mean, it sounds almost <clears throat> too good to be true. Yeah. Are there any risks involved with a, a procedure like this if somebody wanted to use Botox to help with their sweating? So the risks are uh, bruising, uh, bleeding, uh, pain at the injection site, kind of, you know, uh, same kind of risks if you were to get a um, B12 injection or something like that. Anytime that you puncture the tissue, it's th those kinds of risks. Uh, in terms of anything secondary to that, not really. Well, 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 wait, 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 we were talking toxins, so if your toxins don't leave your body, then there could be some major effects, but that's right. another Yeah, they break down. So, so Botox and any botulinum toxin A, they break down, and they are completely out of your system within a couple of days, completely broken down. And the small amounts that we use, so we'll use like half a vial on each side, um, those are completely released and out of your system and broken down. So um, really it's within the, the 40 minutes, it already starts breaking down, but we say we give it a couple of days to be completely released. And because it's so superficial, it doesn't really get into the system, it's too small of an amount. Mm. I've had some friends that are hosting, they've done it, and they love it. Yeah. So I might have to come talk to you about this. Yeah, <laughs> so I think we're gonna have they to do... explore this. Yeah. Um, because you know, my, my greatest concern was always that, you know, I. If I shut down certain glands, mm -hmm. then the toxins would have to come out somewhere else. Right. Or they wouldn't come out at all. Right. And, yeah. Yeah. And that that is a concern for yeah. for many people. So um, the because we have two to four million sweat glands, only two percent of those are actually located in your axilla. Oh. oh. Wow. And so it kind of diverts yeah. the the sweating kind of elsewhere. Ah. So you get a little bit more in the other areas of your body. Uh, it but doesn't... only 2% more. That's yeah. not too right. bad. I can deal with that. Yeah. Come out of my cats or something. I'm fine. Yeah, I mean, that's right. <laughs> Elbows are great. Exactly. The, and, and the answer that I, that I have, because I have a lot of patients that say that same thing, and by the way, primary axillary hyperhidrosis is not like my main thing. It's just one of the things that I do. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I actually don't have uh, any toxin put under my, my own underarms, because I believe that we should continue to sweat. I think right. we have them for a reason. Yeah. So I don't, I don't personally stop my own. Um, but, and it's also the reason that I don't wear antiperspirants. Mm -hmm. I wear uh, like a deodorant, something that oh, stops the odor, but not something that stops the sweat. So I actually am sweating right now. So what else can yeah. we get injected? People get inject their lips, they inject, what else? Yeah, I'm so really what? every part of your body, I mean every part of your body, you can, you can inject at this point. And we have found, amazing ways to improve upon anyone's body. Um, and 
I I've, seen, I've seen people, <laughs> I've not done it, but I've seen people do their hands <clears throat> now. Like, I mean, yep. people inject that's a big everything. Thing. It's like yeah. bizarre. Right. And just like what you were talking about, my entire life I've been trying to get a smaller butt, <laughs> not a larger one. So when I have doing? patients that come and say, you know, I want, you know, this big thing, I'm like, awesome. <laughs> um, I can do that, but, you know, it's not my thing. So beauty's right. in the eye of the beholder. Totally. I have figured out, you know, what is what one person thinks is super attractive, I may not. And the same, and it goes both ways. You know, what I think is super attractive, you guys right. may not, you know, so, oh God, uh, so beauty's funny. in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> well, please, right. please tell everyone where they can find and follow you. Okay, uh, I am the Master Injector. My Instagram handle is the Master Injector. And my name is Bernice Cohen. I work right here in Beverly Hills at Ava MD for Dr. Ava Shamban. And uh, that's it. That's awesome. Thanks for having Thank me. Yeah. 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 We are Good Morning Lala and America's First Live <laughs> Streaming we'll Daily Talk Show coming to you live Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. I mean, All of want. today's interviews are available as a podcast on iTunes, and the whole show is streaming on Apple TV and Roku via the Evertalk app. That's right. We're waking up the world together. You guys have a beautiful <laughs> thought Thursday. Make it happen. Yes. It's going to be a good morning, Lala Land.